I hear you fine, loud and clear. Okay, excellent. Can you, how do I look? Can you see me or should I sit in the sun? I'm trying to avoid the sun. Is that better? You look good. You look good. And your background's pretty stable. So. It's a virtual background. Like yours. Yeah. Do you want to see the I'm real, ba you see the real background? You. Oops. Let me see if I do the real. Uh, I'm going to do the. Hold on. I'm going to do the uh, uh, regular background. How about this? Oh, Can nice. You see me now? Let's see. Yeah. This is the real background. Well, that's this is pretty nice, too. Mine's I like just the virtual a wall one. behind me. Yeah. It's very relaxing. You like the, vir you like the like virtual my, one? You like not? my quarantine <laughs> hair? You know what? <laughs> yeah, I, I do the coloring myself, but because nice. I live in Hawaii, you can't mail um, those chemicals. So if we yeah. weren't on shutdown, I would just go down the street and pick it up from the store, no problem. But um, I have but to everything's have to find a, a way to get it mailed to me now. Just, okay. Let's just go for it. They'll understand. We're rookies. Okay. First time. First time. I'm following your lead. <laughs> Excellent. So normally I have a list of questions for people, but you've been interviewed a ton of times, one. And why make you repeat the same stuff otherwise? But right now... We're in a really, really unique situation um, globally, and in um, yeah. participatory sports and spectator, spectator events in particular, yes. we're walking this very uncharted territory. And a lot of people have. Um, am I talking too loud? One, I, I have a tendency no. I hear you fine. Okay, I have a tendency to talk really loud when um, it's not like up against me or a person. Anyhow, it's all good. Um, so. People uh, are seeking one guidance and motivation, and and you know, like in sports in particular, it's not like something that you can put on a shelf and be like, well, when it markets open, I'll bring my painting to uh, the audiences, and they'll love it just the same, whether it's today or two weeks or next month. Same with music or right. you know whatever that you can distill, but we have all these um, athletes that have a variety of perspectives and um, motivations that bring them to the sport. And we need somebody to tell us to keep going, to keep going, <laughs> you know, I well, even though a lot yeah. of these things are canceled and um, you know, it's easy for some people to be like, well, I'm just going to bulk another year and that's great. And that's where, you know, the easiest answer is, but um you know, you've been through you ups and downs in this sport. Let us hear, you know, like your perspective. Well, I mean, look, we are we are in uncharted water. None of us have ever been faced with what we're dealing with now. The world has never seen anything to this degree. I mean, we've had other pandemics, nothing to this degree of uncertainty yeah. um, and lockdown. And right now we're at a time where things are starting to loosen and we're very scared about loosening the restrictions because as much as we want them to be loosened up, we don't want this thing to resurge and, and spike again. So all of this um, domino effect from the people that work in all areas, listen, I fly for a living, literally I'm on a plane every week and I've exactly, been grounded yeah. since March. Um, and from March till now, two months, it's not a long time in the grand specter of things since I've been traveling like this since 1988. Um, I turned pro in 87 and every year from basically March till December, I'm on an airplane. So to have this pause that's uh, global, it's not just germane to California or Hawaii yeah. or the United States. This is a global, everything stopped on a global. We're all in this together. So you look at the glass is half empty or half full. Um, we're all probably running on reserves. Most people live paycheck to paycheck. So we're becoming very resourceful in areas of communication, uh, reconnecting, uh, a lot of ingenuity going on to try to pass the time. I mean, there's a lot of hours in a day and it's Groundhog Day. I don't even know what day it's today, like Tuesday or Wednesday. I don't, it, it doesn't really matter, right? I'm like, until we have our, our, our normalcy back, the Saturday feels like a Monday. Um, but that being said, the people that were strong going into this are going to be stronger coming out of it. The people that were where the glass is half empty, it's doomsday for them. I mean, it's the end of the world for some of the naysayers out there 
uh, and the conspiracy theorist, but I always look at the glass as half full. This is God's time out for us, for the world. Um, look at it this way. The atmosphere, the global atmosphere, the global warming we were talking about, we got a time out and all that. Mother Nature yeah. is slowly restoring itself. Um, and I you're also, not polluting the world. I also think that some of us, um, we don't like think of how the big machinery works. Like, you know, sure. Oh, Sean Ray, he's a big guy and he's the biggest goat, you know, all this stuff. And why can't he just throw this event? But it relies on a lot of people that take part in it. And even if, and even if we got together and we did it virtually, you know, it still takes a lot of people to make these things successful. And well, there are a lot more, there are a lot more are moving parts. As You're well. right. People have to realize now that instead of just getting ready for a show, they have to realize all the, the things that go into it. Think of it as a house and um, you're building a house. Before you can start putting the bricks together and the, and the wood, the plywood and the nails and all the other um, accessories that go into the kitchen and that go into the laundry room and the plumbing that goes in, you've got to have a blueprint. Everything has to be laid out in writing before you even get there. Well, the Hawaii Classic in, in its three years, that's already done. The blueprint was already written. We've already built the house in terms of each year progressively getting bigger. We've moved around three different times. We started out at the Modern Hotel, went to the Hawaii Convention Center, and then we found a home at the Hilton Hawaii Hotel. All three of those venues were totally different people I had to work with. Um, Make those relationships. The stage. Yes, and, and so now we have the relationship, the blueprint's done, the die has been cast and everything's going but it still takes sponsorship dollars. It still takes, I go to Hawaii five, six times before I even have my show. I haven't been once this year and we're going into month number five. So not being able to go to the gyms and the stores, talk to the athletes, talk to my sponsors and vendors. I can not even lay that foundation in order to make the deposits that the hotel requires because the hotel then needs to have the money for the security of the, of the venue. They need to have a certain number of rooms booked. They need to have a certain number of people available to do the audio and visual. And I need to have my people. I need to have my guy come in, Steve McAdams from All About Audio from yeah. Virginia, Maryland area. So and I have to have my, my metals were ma made and manufactured in China. And so that's not happening. Um, right. And my trophies are, my trophies are developed out of Arizona. And then my T-shirts, I have to have manufactured. I have to have all these things done on my website. You notice that I have done nothing because I, I usually start in March. And March is when we got locked down, March the 12th. I remember it like it was yesterday. Right. I just came back right. from the Arnold Classic. My uh, yeah. production schedule has been affected as well. Yeah. yeah, but here, everyone's been affected. So mm -hmm. my decision to cut, the, cut everything off was, listen, I don't want one athlete dieting and preparing mentally or psychologically or financially something they think might happen in November when the groundwork, the blueprint and the die has to be cast in March, April, May, and June. That's where all the work yeah. is done before you ever get there. Beyond. Because once I get to July, yeah. Once I get to July, now it's really about formulating the relationships with the athletes to get them hyped up to start their preparation. I wanted to nip right. it in the bud, stop it before they stop it before they start. And in the midst of all of that, we're still on lockdown. California yeah. is on lockdown. They initially said April 30th, then they said May the 15th, and now they're talking about June. Yeah, Either here way, it's May 31st um, for most areas. A April 30th. Oh, oh okay, May 31st Hawaii. in Hawaii. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter. Listen, when you come up, it's like people are coming up and they're going to be in debt. People are going to be wondering if they have a job. People are going to be wondering where they're going to get their next meal they're not they're gonna wonder whether or not they can go into a gym and train comfortably unabashed and 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 the way that they used to the new normal is going to change for a lot of people a lot yeah. of gyms are going out of business so what i think do you life feel is about um virtual competitions and taking some of these and you know like making it a big like how um, john krasansky did the the prom where i listen of people i'm I am all for 2020 is gone. Yeah, Ross. I understand I'm all that. For, I'm all for, I, I'm, I'm more for people restructuring their life, reprioritizing their relationships with family and friends, figuring out how they're going to get through 2020. And when right. January comes and if we are back to normal, we pick up business as usual. 
Okay. But I don't want anyone in Hawaii talking about, thinking about, or investing one second into the canceled NPC Sean Ray Hawaiian Cloud. So it's gone. Like it doesn't exist. And if you're hardcore yeah. about competing, you're going to have to look, look at another show. I just think that for me and for the athletes, looking at 2021 optimistically, looking back at 2020 to be a normal citizen, to again, find your new normal, figure out how you're going to make it through without getting uh, sick or getting anyone else sick is it's all, are you there? Okay. Yes, it's I'm all here. More important, it's, it's all more important to me than competition. And that's how Truly. I feel. Um, others don't, others feel like, Hey, you know what? I, I'm a gym owner or I have access to a gym. Yeah. Well, it's disproportionate because the athletes I have in my show come from around the world. Right. So exactly. I got, a, I got athletes, I got athletes that would love to come, but can't. So I don't want any of these athletes thinking about my show. If anything, nostalgically think about how much fun you had and how much fun we're going to have in 2021. Yeah. And then turn the page, go out and be resourceful, prepare yourself mentally and financially and, and physically to be ready to start 2021 off uh, with a fresh start. Because I, I personally believe that we are not out of the woods. It could get worse before it gets better. There is a domino effect in the housing market, rent market, car payment market, personal training, gym ownership. At last thing I want you to do is restrict your calories, train your ass off, and then go home and be stressed out about life. Competition mm -hmm. to me is just not that important in 2020. We're halfway through it. And I say, you know what? Spend your time uh, investing in off-season training, um, mental, financial, and spiritual building up of who you are, what's important to you. And then in, in January, reevaluate your approach to 2021. That's where I'm and, at. And, and uh, you know, be creative with your home gym training. You know, I, I know yeah, it's not it, possible it, listen, for no, everyone. Anyone can train. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can, anyone can um, do push-ups, sit-ups, and running, and sprints, and yoga, and even riding bikes. It's not the same as training your ass off in a gym if you don't have the ability or the access. Um, but some people right. are more resourceful than others. Some people are not missing any workouts. They're right. not missing one workout. But you know what? They may not be able to work. They may not yeah. be able I to go to work. I have farm work out of, here. I have to take care of all the stuff that builds up growing and, and uh, what. So days when I'm not in my home gym, I am pushing mm -hmm. a lawnmower. I'm you know, doing stuff. And I, I realize people in cities and more dense populations don't have those luxuries of uh, having yeah. wet like that. <laughs> you know? yeah. we're, definitely, so, we're definitely in a time you have to be resourceful. We have to be resourceful. And if training is your thing, do an alternative form of training. If the one that you love the most doesn't exist, go to the next one. Listen, if they got rid of ground beef and they got rid of steak, I'd have to switch to chicken and turkey and, and, and fish. Like I would have to become resourceful. Uh, if my yeah. gym no longer had a squat rack, I'd have to figure it out. I, I, I take my mind back to like Rocky four where Sylvester Stallone yes! went and he, he left he left and he went to Russia and he had to train in the snow and he had to carry logs and he had to go up and down these hills and, and it, you know you just got to be resourceful if physical fitness is your thing yeah. um, but most importantly I, I think mentally those that had their mind set for November take your mind off it focus on something else that's more important and if you absolutely want to compete you can't even pick and choose when or where because there aren't any shows scheduled with 100% certainty as of today. So why, why consume your thought process with that? It's, it's an obsessive compulsive behavior that all of us athletes have, whether it's a big yeah. orexia, anorexia, or training with the weights, but you have to control the mind so it doesn't drive you freaking crazy. Get competition and, out of your head. And, and, and that's what, you know, like that ability to be self-disciplined is what, um, has given some people so much success, but then they don't know how to redirect it so that it's at. Well, I see, I see plenty of people redirecting. I got buddies of mine that are actually now in the manufacturing business for masks and gloves. I mean, I they're finding that. a way to be resourceful. They're finding a way to contribute. Uh, I've got guys that have personal training studios that are now allowing their clients to go in without them, but do a Zoom call or a Skype call and they were able to coach them from home while they're in the gym on their own. It's, listen, it's not rocket science. You just yeah, got to get creative Crystal with Gypsy how you manage your time. was uh, who I met at the competition this last uh, in Oahu. Uh, she yeah. was also making masks. And, you know, so I, I do see that as well. 
I do see that as well. And I, I try to signal boost people when I see their Instagram posts about how they are navigating um, stay at home in resourceful ways. Well, for someone that travels the world on a regular annual basis for the past, I've been retired from competition 19 years, but I was professional for 14. So yeah. when you combine those two, when you combine those two, that's how many years I've been traveling from March to December. So I'm not in a position to complain about the fact that my wings are clipped for a little bit. I'm okay. Like <laughs> mentally I'm okay. My life has changed. Um, and I feel like I'm being civilized, but I, I also have a finer appreciation for things I don't, I was taking for granted in terms of just being here and being present and talking to people on Skype and on zoom and on, on, instead of texting each other, because we moved yeah. in this area where you just text, you text and you don't right. see, and you misinterpret what the emotion is behind black and white text. And suddenly now you can see facially and hear emotionally and you have that reconnection of like, wow, that was a good conversation. So I encourage everyone, look, you have, when I retired, I had to replace that hunger, that desire to get out of bed and go train for the Olympia. I had to replace yeah. that with something. So now that traveling for me and doing that type of business, I've got to replace that. And so I've replaced it with reconnecting with friends, reconnecting with family, um, and also becoming more into my head production wise. I'm already thinking about things in 2021 that I can do that don't require large crowds of people that put them in harm's way. And right. we don't know what that harm, because of the masks and the gloves and the sanitization of everything, we don't necessarily want to be rushing back into a large crowded room. And as a promoter, I can't expect that I'm going to sell out a venue and have all these athletes in close proximity backstage and think everyone's going to be comfortable. I've got to get creative with maybe um, preparing these athletes mentally and physically. Yeah, mentally and physically with teaching. So I'm going to go more towards the clinic area involving some judges right and some coaches. Right there. And also involve the sponsors because all the athletes are looking for sponsors, but they don't necessarily know what they want to give. What, like they say, how do I get sponsored? What does the sponsor expect? Well, I want the sponsors to tell the athletes what it is they need to do to be sponsored. So I want to include yeah. clinics like that on a, on a teaching level more than uh, competition levels. I really like that. I, I love that yeah. whole direction. And um, I, I'm not represented by this company or anything, but I think that they have a really great product that uh, it's a 3D camera. Maybe you could incorporate some virtual uh, where it's like the people are experiencing it firsthand, like as if they were yeah. to travel to the workshop that I participated in the day before the competition, you know, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. things like that, you know, like exploring new we're moving technology in it. Yeah, we are to make moving, these things happen. We're, we're definitely moving into that direction. And uh, there's going to be a lot of other things that pop up as a result. And, and, and like we said, we're looking at television differently. They're able to host their TV shows from their living rooms and we're getting um, up close and personal with some of these celebrities, artists, musicians with their home life, which lets us in just a little bit more. The door is opening a little more, the curtains being pulled back and, and we're realizing these are normal people. Look at the toys in the background. They've got children yeah. and, and look, they didn't I, do their laundry or something. On um, the Colbert show when uh, John Batiste was, did, uh, played the, his piano from home, the, the first uh, air, airing episode, uh, it brought tears to, to me. To, to see these people why? in the home. Why were, you move, why were you moved? Why were you moved? How did it move you emotionally? Why? Because it was a personal, was it, yeah, humanized uh, a connection um, more so than, you know, we're, we're all alone together. You know, we're in this together. Yeah, and that's, we're, in this digital age, it's definitely the right. Can you imagine if we were not connected digitally right now? My kids would be going freaking nuts. <laughs> I mean, you're able to do school. You're able to do school from home, right? And you're able to do business from home and you're able to have conference calls. So we cannot really complain that think much. About, I think about, um, I've been self-employed for a long time, but when I went to college and stuff, I had an hour and 10 commute. And then in grad school, I had an hour and a half commute each way. And then I just think of all the time that people, and when I lived in San Francisco, oh, I didn't, you know, just like all the time in traffic that was eaten up and taken away from 
um, if time were a resource, you know, like that chunk is taken away from my ability to make decisions. And I think about all the people that, you know, there's 10 hours every week that now they have to themselves that they didn't. So, you well, know. I think everyone has, everyone has an opportunity. Again, the glass is either half empty or it's half full. I'm not thinking about what was taken away from me. I'm thinking about what I have available. And yeah. that's how I get out of bed every day. I, I have the luxury of being able to communicate with the world virtually and telephonically and through email digitally. And so I'm still connected. If I lose my Wi-Fi, I'm going to lose my mind, right? And, and, and I have it. Um, I, um, and if, if, if you were never connected with Wi-Fi, you're not missing anything. But I mean, we are all connected in some form or fashion digitally. So I'm thankful for that. Yeah, I'm out on satellite internet, and so um, a big a big storm comes, and I am I'm very isolated out in the yeah. jungle, and so um, you can get through that even too. So, <laughs> well, hey, listen, it could always it, it could always be worse. I mean, listen, I'm in California where there's no clouds in the sky. You're in Hawaii. I mean, you could be sitting there in the in the North Pole, you know, freezing yeah. your butt off, and and not able to leave your house. There's a lot of isolated places that people are not able to just go outdoors. I'm able to go outside right. and guess what? I'm breathing clean air. I'm breathing clean air for a change. Um, if I have to be inconvenienced by putting a mask on my face to be around other people, it's a very small inconvenience when I start thinking about the, you know, the prisoners that are in jail and they don't have the freedom to come outside. So there's always someone that's worse off than ourselves. And you know, you get more when you give. So I'm trying to find ways um, to give because I know that the blessing comes back tenfold. So in that isolated time, don't let that, you know, uh, isolation and idle time uh, can make people crazy. So stay busy. That's why I say stay uh, active. Yeah, stay busy. that is one of the biggest uh, things about the situation is to keep your mind and your body busy for sure. Because mm -hmm. Otherwise, you can go to a really dark place if you don't have, you know, the tools and resources. Well, we're going to come out of this. Listen, it's, for me, again, it, we're, we're in a holding pattern, and this too shall pass. And typically when things like this happen, we always come out better as a result of it. And we'll look back five years from now and go, remember that time when the world shut down, literally shut down? And, and because of the world shutting down, when it reopens, it's going to be a better place. I mean, yeah. think of all the things we just think of all the things we took for granted and businesses took for granted and the high price of going to Disneyland. They were gouging us for years. And now the whole thing shut down to like 2021 karma. They're going to have to lower those prices. And guess what? If we're going to pay expensive money to do certain things, that shit better be clean, right? Like they're going right? to have to make sure that we're getting the best service, the, the, we know that we're not going to have to second guess of whether or not we're going to sit down on a, on a bus or a subway or on an airplane and it's going to be a dirty seat or a dirty table tray. So I think we're going to get better service as a result of this. And it's a, it's a blessing in disguise because we don't feel the results yet until yeah. we get to the other side of this and, and, and we're going to be the benefactors. And the amount of human made um, pollution, whether that has anything to do with whatever is not what I'm arguing, what it, but the satellite images make it clear that we are putting things into the atmosphere when we go out all day, every day, and uh, all the factories are open and all of that. So I don't have answers to how to mitigate all that once we go back to next new normal. But I do know well, that I can... it's obvious that we have to work on finding new solutions to, to be more environmentally. You know. Well, I think people are, I think they're, they're doing that. Listen, you take the cars off the road, the airplanes out of the sky, the buses off the streets and you know, you got the clean air. You know, I, the Chinese were wearing masks long before, before the pandemic came out because the pollution in China was so, so, so bad. Right. Truly. And now, and now it's like they're ingenious because they might've saved themselves from inhaling all of the pollutants that we do on a regular basis. We got a lot of rain here in California this year. We got total blue, clear skies that's smog-free for the moment. Um, I think when we come back, we're going to appreciate the, this little time out in history that the world took a moment to heal and cleanse itself. And our role as humans was just to step back and let it happen. So I'm not, I'm not mad at what's happening. Yeah. This isn't happening because of uh, 
This isn't happening because of us. This is God's time out. And if you look at it that way, uh, you can only feel thankful that it's happening. So I'm thankful for this yeah. time out. Yeah. I'm talking to people I haven't talked to in years. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to people. I'm, I'm thinking about things and I'm, I'm, I'm getting further into myself with my isolation, even with my family. They're, they're kind of scattered throughout the house doing their little thing, introspective, but also relationship building people that they haven't visited. They're, they're talking to people I haven't talked to. I mean, I got people, you know, that have died in the last, this past week, I've had two people I knew that are dead now. And it's, it's making me reach out to people that I haven't talked to in a long time. Cause I don't want them to die without having a relationship with them. Uh, yeah. Not because of the COVID one no. had a massive stroke and the other, the other one was a bodybuilder who just died in England that they're still trying to figure out how she, she had asthma uh, her whole life, but it's not COVID related, but nonetheless, call those people, especially the older people and um, reach out to them. I'm talking to guys I grew up with who have kids that are 17, 18, 19 years old that I, I was aware of, but never saw. Uh, and I'm, I'm talking to their offspring, man. It's kind of cool to reach out and just do that. If I'm sitting, I can watch TV all day. I, I call it the idiot box. I can watch TV all day and feel bad for myself. Or I could pick up the phone and talk to my friend who has kids I don't know. And that's really cool to, to see the job that my friends have done with their children and then also see them changing some of their, their st business strategies to contribute and give back also. So Truly. I encourage everybody to stay engaged and don't isolate. Engage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And also, the, the uh, you know, switching your production or your time or whatever to giving back is almost like the only thing that you can do right now. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it's the only thing I can do. I'm not mad. I, hey, look, I, I've, I've taken for many years. It's not a problem to give back. And, and, in, and in giving back, what I'm saying is make it more – inclusive these bodybuilders have had something taken away from them which is the spirit of competition and now they're in this uncertain time of whether or not they'll ever compete again when will they compete again so to make it easier on them like i think doing clinics is the best way for the, to teach them and then in those clinics to reward them uh with prizes with free entries into competition with free tanning with free posing sessions with pre free personal training diets nutrition yeah. i'm gonna you know call on my collective friends the way the music industry and the hollywood industry has done and we're going we're gonna to find ways to give back to these athletes and reward them in their time out, right? Because mm -hmm. they're going to need as much ammunition going into 2020, that, 2021 that they can to become out, you know, bigger, better, stronger, um, and more aware of, uh, of the appreciation for being an athlete, for, for dieting hard and sacrificing. And I think 2021 is going to it's going to be very rewarding for a lot of athletes in a lot of different ways, um, not just re reuniting with the spirit of competition, but it, not taking the sport for granted because anyone can lift weights, anyone can diet. But when you're on that stage, it's, I mean, it's a different, it's a whole other world, right? Because it's, while it's very individual, everyone has that kindred spirit of fear, success, uh, inspiration, motivation, depression, all of these things that are manifested getting ready for a show. And there you are center stage. And once you've gone through it, I think if you have the right mentorship, motivation, and information to go again, um, you'll go into it with more confidence and you'll come out of it with even more experience. And then those are the ones that wind up being the teachers of tomorrow. Um, so since um, the, for the last two years, my direction in life has been about motivating other people and, and, and you know, progressing my own self in, in that process too. Um, I would like to help you with this motivating other people um, direction that you're headed as well by I, one i would like to offer up some packages of fire fit cacao uh, pre-workout and recovery for you to send to people as part of this project that you're working on or developing mm -hmm. and um I appreciate and, it and i think that uh we could also talk about setting up some sort of financial thing uh that would help give a give a reward uh, Absolutely, uh, all that. All uh, that stuff Anime would, be would like to sponsor uh, up to a certain amount. We'll talk after our video conference is over, and um, we'll set up set it shipping off the Firefit cacao stuff as well. So yeah, we would appreciate. All we can support. all come together and um, you know make it make this make this long season. You know, just like well, long season twenty twenty. 
Yeah, and you know, that's the spirit of Hawaii. It's, a, it's like a family type thing. And at the end of the day, listen, um, there may be a show in Hawaii. I talked with the promoters. We know that the Ikaika scheduled for, I believe, June or July is trying to look for another date. And I know the Aloha Muscle is now, which is normally in September by Ray Rock Hill, is now looking at my date, November the 20th, which is a Friday, um, to try to come back. And if, that, if one or both of those happen, great we can kind of see how that works and if neither one of them happen and we chalk this entire season up to just time to just train and, and be normal it is what it is but in 2021 again any kind of support you can offer to, to help give back we welcome that on behalf of the whole sean ray hawaiian classic yes yes we're happy right. we're happy to support uh all the athletes all the athletes i i gain right. so much um education and motivation from the community Awesome. Well, I appreciate the support. I got to run and take my mom. Thank you for lunch. taking like this 81 time. 81 years old. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you for absolutely. taking the time well, and we'll tell be... her that uh, we, we wish her good health. And All right. Well, stay tuned for breaking information after November 2021. 20, I'll give updates on the website, srhawaiianclassic.com okay. for whatever projects we have coming out. Uh, nothing's going to happen on my end prior to November the 20th, but I plan on being out there before the new year and uh, have a workshop type clinic. So stay tuned to the website. Okay. Excellent. We'll tell everybody. All right. Shaka. Shaka. <laughs> Take care. Be safe.